Hello and welcome back to Ireland. Last time, well, we started a war against Great Britain and France with the goal of, well, growing uh, Northumberland and also taking one of the Scottish provinces I can start while growing them too. And as we're currently standing, it will be interesting to see if, uh, if it actually ends up in a victory. I would so kind of believe it will do because we're still at war with France and France has Austria and a couple of others on their necks. I have Spain as my ally, I have Portugal to help and all in all, I'm pretty sure I will be getting the uh, results that I, I want here. Due to the fact that these guys actually decided to not help out, I'll be dissolving my alliances with them. Because, well, eh, it's no use to having them if uh, if they don't actually help me in my war. I know it's hypocritical concerning or considering how I play, but uh, nothing to be done with that right now. And as I said, we'll do sieges and then I'll try to sneak my troops into, uh, well, into... Uh, into France. We'll see how that goes. As you can see, the Swedish armies are actually uh, pretty damn stubborn because they're being attacked by a much larger French force here, and apparently they did manage to rout it, surprisingly enough. But uh, as you see, also sieges are coming along pretty nicely for at least on my behalf, so it shouldn't actually be that much of uh, of an issue here. And boom, we're up at 31%. And what are these guys willing to? Only Yorkshire. So I have to actually siege that bill in order to get it. But as you can see, they're not actually uh, they're not actually feeling feeling my deal. So I'll have to siege everything, and then I'll be, as I said, trying to sneak my armies into uh, well into France. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out, especially considering that the French do have a pretty substantial navy uh, roaming around the area, which definitely will make it uh, a lot more difficult than than it needs to be. So uh, we'll see how it turns out. I kind of have a small dilemma right now because the French do have still 50,000 troops in play and that is basically all the troops they have combined. But there is the issue of the fact that they are actually in one unit and as such we do not have enough troops in the area to actually cause uh, problems for them. We could have if not the Austrians are actually decided to just outright peace out of the war. If they haven't done that we'd probably still have a chance. And also of course if the Spaniards have actually done something instead of just sitting on their asses like I do and well. Yeah, I know. Uh, in the walls where I help, I mostly just sit on my arse and don't really help. But I'm kind of surprised about how AI Spain is actually handling this. They're war, but they don't actually give a damn. They are just sitting here and not willing to <laughs> to cooperate at all. And I do find that kind of weird. But yeah, I think I'll be continuing a little while longer and see what happens. Uh, at the very least, I will be able to get probably a, a Shire or... AS Shire, so that's no problem. I will be able to release Scotland. So, in the worst case scenario, I'll probably be able to just sit by and allow the war exhaustion to rise for Great Britain and thus maybe be able to uh, to get some rebels going. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. I did actually end up losing my army to the French, which is kind of surprising how easily they actually just ran me over. And considering that, I think I'll just go for Air Shire here. It uh, doesn't really matter. I can't actually get too much or much else out of this war. And as such, we'll simply, uh, I think we'll simply just go for that. We can, of course, come back and cause some more issues later. So just taking Ashai is probably all that we could have hoped for. And at least now we did win a battle. I'm a little bit unsure if the French actually, or we did hurt their prestige enough to uh, have the Union's break. But it doesn't look that way at least. And I'm a little bit unsure how Great Britain actually handles this. Yeah, we'll continue, which is kind of, uh, kind of annoying. But uh, what I will be doing here is create the vassal Scotland, which should uh, help out a little bit as well. And I'll also go ahead and take Diplomatic Tech 10, the flute, which gives a boost to trade efficiency, which is basically the most important uh, aspect of that. And secondly here, we'll do a little bit interesting check. Wow, to check if I can actually get some Patriots up here. I can get some Scots up apparently. Well, at least I can try to boost <laughs> boost them. Uh, I'll, tr I'll try to invest in them and see if they actually end up appearing, but I kind of doubt it. I believe I also have taken two loans that needs to be repaid, so uh, it's not looking too great. We'll have to uh, we'll have to hope that those rebels pop up pretty damn swift if that's the case. But apparently, they still have a zero zero percent chance, which is quite annoying. But well, we'll have to uh, we'll have to deal with that later. As you see, national defense, policy stability, luck, English Bill of Rights. So rebels is definitely not a uh, something too to bad on here, and I definitely have to rebuild my armies as well here, which is not good either. 
So you guys can just come home and will not be wasting any money on that. Also got Admin Tech 7 which gives me a university. It will definitely help on, uh, on the tech level. And of course the group of ideas is also pretty nice. And as I said we'll probably go for economic or administrative ideas. Uh, since we do use a lot of mercenary mostly. Uh, I think we could actually take or benefit from this one. We do get the 20% production efficiency and uh, no matter what we choose but land maintenance is probably uh, a better choice here along with the uh, tax modifier and minus 2 inflation so it's kind of a hard choice and innovative is also pretty good for well with a lot of boosts here we can get some pretty uh, pretty cheap tech also trade but I think we'll go for the economic ideas for now and hopefully we'll be able to uh, to make something out of this but for the time being we'll have to also I think yeah, get the flint log musket I think it actually helped a little bit more than uh, more than I thought for the French and that is well basically a negative for me but uh, I'll simply have to deal with it uh, we did win the war although I would say that we would have lost it if we continued it so in the end we basically made the best of uh, of a bad situation. If the if the Austrians have actually continued fighting, then I'm pretty sure we would be in, uh, would have been able to uh, to get some pretty decent gains from that. But since we do not need the fleet basing rights, we will uh, we will retract them. No reason for me to pay money for something I do not use. And hopefully we can well get enough troops to start causing some trouble for let's see here. We guys are allied with Russia and the Hansa will accept, but I can <laughs> I can't actually help. That is the irony of this. I've just been complaining that my allies are completely uh, completely useless, but I can't actually help in this because I only have five thousand men in Europe and I do not actually have the money to create anymore. And as I said, I think we'll go for the next military idea. Rather than waiting. We'll we'll simply wait until the archery versus the muskets uh, actually vanish. So, yeah, I think we'll do that. So we'll take the next uh, defensive step, I think. We won't we won't be fighting for a while, so we can take that next uh, defensive step rather than uh, rather than the tech upgrade. So uh, for the time being, I'll just keep on colonizing, keep on trying to get myself in a good position. If Great Britain were not under the French, we'd probably be done by now, I dare say, or two or three more wars. So uh, that's kind of annoying, but. Uh, you have, to, you have to go with the game more or less. We'll, uh, we'll see how it turns out. The Spaniards apparently want me to help them in the Spanish Aragonese trade war against Aragon, Venice, Ferrara and Algiers. I'll accept that, no real danger here for me, or my fleets or anything. Yeah. So, well, it will be a war but only on paper. We will not actually... Uh, will not actually take any negatives from it in sec <laughs> except for this. Uh, apparently my war exhaustion is uh, going slowly but surely up. Which is kind of weird, considering the fact that I ain't actually getting any at all. So, a blockaded home port, well, I guess that's kind of a reason, but uh, it doesn't actually show up, so I thought it would be lower. Apparently, I cannot take any one of those because I still have that loan to pay back, and I really like to have a lower level guy to deal with, but as you can see, my inflation is actually going positive now due to the fact that, uh, due to the fact that I lost that inflation guy is quite bad but yeah I'll definitely be saving up now for a university to make my my text cheaper I feel that Burgundy here is <laughs> kind of in trouble and uh, Netherlands have actually declared independence and that's what five provinces and all of them are high cost I'm a little bit unsure that would actually work out but uh, the tale of us of Netherlands declare independence of the year's subjugation and alleged injustices forced on them by what is perceived as a foreign rule. Our provinces in the Low Countries have signed an act of duration, renouncing their oath to Burgundy and declaring independence. I guess I'll once again, on the paper, be with them because that Dutch fleet is kind of scary. It's, well, it's not something that I can bypass. And apparently, Burgundy does not have the uh, the uh, brains here to go into their own province, or I have no idea if they're actually trying to regain morale before they're going. But, uh, Apparently they were regaining morale, but they should be able to win this without me, so uh, I'm, I'm kind of safe here that it will work out just fine. First economic idea I've been taking, national tax modifier plus 10%, 10% should help out uh, a little bit, but uh, other than that, not really uh, anything to report, I think. As expected in Netherlands, they couldn't actually take everything, and apparently they also accrued 
some uh, aggressive expansion, which is kind of weird in its own sense as well. But the Netherlands have these two provinces, so potentially what I could do here is just sweep in and kill them off. So, or later that would be. But uh, for the time being, not anything actually much to report. Although, it's a kind of funny how the Aragon fleet and troops bypassed the Spaniards and wound up in Ireland. I kind of find that to be rather hard to explain. I have no idea if you guys feel the same. But uh, I can't actually find a reasonable explanation to how they actually ended up up here rather than uh, down south. So, uh, kind of hilarious, but at the same time, very annoying. So, uh, I'll have to deal with that myself, which basically means that I'll have, be tra I'll have to train some troops because I can't actually get a. Uh, I can't actually sneak sneak my troops over due to the Agony's fleet that the Spaniards apparently do not, uh, do not give a two dams about. So. Uh, but I basically do have my army now, so I can uh, I can deal with them. I think shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Hopefully, diplomacy tech has reached level 11, which is canal and shipyard. So I can finally start building some of my shipyards. But I still want to build that university first, so it'll probably be uh, quite a while away. Uh, on that same note, though, the Argonese troops were were easily annihilated to quick battles, so uh, that's fine. And once again, I put myself in a position where there's just level 2 guys, and I kind of want to save my money, as I said. And I do need the military points though, so we'll we'll go ahead and buy one of these, we'll keep them. And hopefully then we can, to some extent, try and catch up with, uh, with the French who do have their uh, super king, more or less. So uh, we'll see how, how that turns out. Apparently... As soon as this guy actually came of age, he d <laughs> my old king died, so that's a clear sign that this guy will actually live till he becomes a hundred and well it will be interesting to see how that actually works out as you can see he's 16 years old and my hopes here is that he dies horribly or heroically I guess you could say in battle and that way allows us to uh, to uh, well get ourselves a king of the house trust tomorrow so potentially I could get the Spanish in a union well, the worst case scenario that the Spanish get me in a union, but it doesn't really matter at this stage. Um, once again, should I take... Yeah, I should probably take the next level of military attack rather than uh, the idea, so we'll be doing that. Military attack 17 has been reached, a flint locked musket, and to me it actually just gave cavalry shock plus one. So, not that important. The next one is though, improved maneuver value, basically faster troops. Uh, come with new cannons and new cavalry. So basically that's quite an important one and the same with the one after that again. So uh, I think we should probably focus a little bit more on military attack rather than the idea sets for now. But what we will be taking here is the economic idea here that will uh, decrease build cost which is quite nice. I set up a colony too much by mistake and as such we are losing a little bit of money but uh, it should be fine even so and apparently the Spanish are dragging this out far longer than necessary and apparently the Venetians have actually arrived in, in Incan land so I can't actually piece out of this simply because of the fact that if I were to do that the, uh, the Venetians uh, could potentially steal my, my Incan vassal here but I'm very concerned with what the uh, the Spaniards are actually going for so uh, I, I can't really understand what, what their aim is here Wow, I guess uh, Faith is actually on my side for once. We have a new heir, Kriumtan, I think. Kriumtan, or something like that. And it's definitely wrong, so my apologies in advance. He's a 553, which is basically pretty damn good. It would have been 664 if, uh, if the if a lucky nation got him, but I'm damn happy with him. I believe that's the best king we've had in, uh, in ages. Let's do a quick little check on that, actually. Um, ledgers country uh, the previous rulers where that there it is and let's see here we do have some pretty interesting here. we haven't actually had any rulers since cattle that are actually pretty good we had Tadk, but we are well we have had a couple of good ones but we haven't have anything that's close to the guy we had now the only one is cattle and well I would actually prefer to get uh, another one of the another one of uh, of his caliber but uh, this guy works fine as well, although I really had would have liked if it had a higher military stat or the diplomacy and the military stat was uh, was switched around. But uh, it works, don't get me wrong. 
And right now, there aren't really that much we can do. We will be most likely dealing with the peasants here, although I'm kind of annoyed with how the... Uh, your vassals won't actually do anything by themselves anymore. They basically will cling to you, like a child that doesn't know what to do. And this is kind of also weird. I guess they're having some rebel issues due to the fact that Netherlands is still alive. So uh, that's kind of annoying. But uh, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to deal with Great Britain sooner or later. So for the time being, I'll just be uh, fabricating claims, and we'll see how things go. I've also embargoed France and Great Britain, and it actually had some pretty interesting results. If you see how or how much of the power that I'm reducing, mostly just the New World though. But uh, I'm actually reducing a little bit in London and a tiny tiny bit in uh, Bordeaux. But when it comes to Great Britain itself. The embargo that I'm giving them currently gives them some pretty harsh uh, results. Apparently 10% in London, or almost 10%. And also, uh, it's, I'm actually having less impact in Caribbean, which is kind of surprising. They do have something in Hudson Bay though, or some provinces there, so uh, I'm definitely hurting their trade a little bit. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But unfortunately, this is all I uh, had time for this. Or well, this episode, as you can see, a conversation. I'm just missing one province here. Then we can start patching uh, these areas here, make the map look a little bit prettier. And other than that, not really that much we'll do. We'll once again just be sitting around waiting for our, our chance to take down France a couple of notches. And hopefully this time we'll have uh, we'll have the Spanish actually fighting. So uh, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, praise, criticism, anything you feel like. And I'll see you around next time. Bye.